according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came into a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews used nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself, with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water, well enough to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. She answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right in saying, I do not have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with the woman. But still no one said, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her jar and went into the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say, In four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life, so the sower and reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. 
Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me everything I had done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So in the midst of this unusual time and uncertainty, uh, Bishop Edward Scharfenberger has written a letter to all the people of the diocese, and he's asked us to proclaim it to you. The letter is dated this past week. Or this past Friday. And he begins, My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, be it ever so humble, home is the safest place to weather a storm. And until this current health crisis passes, the best thing we can do to take care of ourselves and one another is not to wander aimlessly, to stick together with purpose. We can stay comfortable at home, and we can comfort one another. The basics, food and water, shelter and clothing, family and friends. Stock up on these and stay put. If you have to go out, let it only be to supply the basics. The game, the party, the trip can wait. Work must go on. Follow the three-foot rule as much as possible. Spread out whether in church, shopping, waiting in the line, or eating somewhere. And pray. Pray alone and pray together. Use the prayers you know. The rosary, novenas, the liturgy of the hours. Make your home a little church. Make sure the cross is visible in a prominent place. If you have a statue or a picture of the Sacred Heart of Jesus or Mary or Joseph, light a candle in front of it. Invite the Holy Family into your home. And get out the Bible. Read it slowly, especially the Gospels. Let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart through the Word of God. He wrote all the scriptures after all, and wants to console your heart. Share with one another what you are hearing. This is a tried and true method of prayer called Lexio Divina, used by so many saints. And don't forget, these are the challenges of which the saints are made, and you are called to be one. It is Lent. So fasting and abstinence a little goes with the season, conserving our resources, offering up our desires and fears and putting them in the hands of God, trusting that with our faith in the mercy of God, we will get through this together, even stronger as a family of faith. No one is under the usual Sunday obligation in our diocese of Albany to go to Mass publicly anywhere until further notice, though public masses will continue, mostly on their usual schedules, as parishes can best provide. It is important to take this to heart and encourage others to be conscientious here, especially anyone not feeling well, or with health conditions, or even if you are just over 60. Stay home, use your TV, computer, or phone, watch the news, but not too much. Don't have the TV on all the time. Quiet is very important. Throughout our diocese, we are working together to find safe places for those who do not have family connections or a place to call home. We continue to watch as we receive advice and direction from public health authorities on where to go for testing and care if and when you are not feeling well. 
We'll keep you posted on the rcda.org website, on our diocesan social media, and through local TV, newspapers, and radio, and our own evangelist newspaper, and our website, evangelist.org. If you feel you want to assist in relief efforts for those who do not have a home, shelter, or emergency care, and if you have the means to do so, there is an easy, safe, on way of giving on the Catholic Charities website. This is interesting. CCRCDA.org. Catholic Charities, RCDA. So CCRCDA. If you experience yourself an urgent need, there is help for you on that website as well. It feels a little like we are in a snowstorm. An invisible but present blizzard where it's not safe to go outside, at least not without protection, and certainly not unless you absolutely have to. We will all be safe at home, much safer than outside, and God is with us. Jesus passes even through walls and locked doors, and even the various kinds of masks we might need to wear to defend ourselves from diseases and other harmful invasions. God's breath is pure and healing. Receive the, the breath and the blessing of the Holy Spirit of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lovingly in Christ, Edward B. Scharfenberger, Bishop of Paul. So this will be just a brief moment, a brief good opportunity just to reflect on how we receive communion uh, in the hand and also on the tongue.